All right, folks, um, we're gonna go over circuit number 12. All right, I'm just gonna demonstrate a couple things. Again, minimal equipment, keep that in mind. Um, there are a number of things where you can use different tools. If you have some of the formal tools, use them because we're gonna be using medicine balls. We'll be using bands and a few other things. Uh, here we'll be using a towel. If you happen to have like a glute roller, or one of the Sornex glute rollers, great, use that. But still trying to focus on minimal, minimal equipment, right? First exercise, getting right into it, is gonna be a single arm, okay? Single arm overhead walking lunge. Again, if you don't have a dumbbell, fine. Use it, get a backpack with weight with books in it. Get, get a gallon, <clears throat> get a gallon drum of uh, liquid. Get your, your laundry detergent. It doesn't matter what it is, okay? So just for the purposes of demonstration, I'm gonna be using a center mass bell, okay? We've all kind of probably seen a walking lunge. The goal is, I don't want to see a rib cage. This is not a good position to do anything in. So neutral rib cage, that's rule number one on this. Arm is, arm is, arm is overhead, not out here. Straight overhead, kind of screw that shoulder in, nice and flat. And when I'm moving, I don't want my knees crossing over my midline. So if I were to split myself in half, when I step, my leg should not invade that midline. Okay, this hand shouldn't be out here floating. This hand here is reciprocating the tension necessary to keep this overhead. So think bow and arrow, okay? Stabilize, big step, touch the knee. There's no weight bearing on my knee. Back to center, step, repeat that. Okay, we'll go over reps and sets here in a second. There'll also be a photo attached to this in the videos on the website like I've been doing for the previous 11. Okay, next one, I just call it squat drops. Okay, again, keep being mindful of what your center line is and don't let anything come into that center line. So you can use a center mass bell, you could hug a medicine ball, books, whatever, some form of weight. You guys are gonna ask me how much weight? This, this is 10 pounds. We want something fairly appropriate, right? 10, 15, 20 pounds, whatever is appropriate for you to execute the movement given the rep and set scheme, okay? So this is where you are gonna make the decision based on the parameters of the reps and sets and your capability. You are going to choose your weights. So just again, for demonstration purposes, this is 10 pounds. I'm gonna keep the weight nice and close to my center line, not shoulders forward, shoulder blades down and back, okay? What I'm doing is I'm gonna come up on my toes. I'm gonna forward lean, basically go into a, a fall, okay? So from this position here, up on my toes, forward lean. So you can also call it like a, a dynamic eccentric squat, okay? And you're gonna repeat that. So up on your toes, drop, okay? Up on your toes, drop, full depth squat, okay? That's the whole idea is what what we're trying to do is, this is super valuable for jumping athletes, because we want repetitive jumps, that's awesome. If you're only as good as your eccentric loading. So same with the squat. If you want to be good at squatting, right? This is not where you want to stop. Up on the toes, squeeze the butt. Full, full eccentric, all the way down. No curling over, knees aren't buckling in, okay? Third exercise is a play off of this. For this, we're gonna use a medicine ball, right? We're calling, we're, we're calling this medicine ball squat slam. You can use a sandbag, um, something weight that you're not, you can slam and not break. Use your imagination uh, and you'll, you'll, catch, you'll get the idea. So I'm gonna grasp this medicine ball like this, pull it into my chest, not be forward. Shoulder blades are down. Rib cage, neutral, okay? That's where I wanna be. I'm gonna pull this ball into my chest but I need to be in a position where I can extend overhead. So pull into my chest, but be able to clear my face, right? So from here, right, I'm gonna go into a squat. All right, heels stay down, up, slam, decelerate. Knees aren't coming in, my hands aren't coming on the inside of me because then you'll end up in a shrug. When you jump, your hands pass beside you, okay? not in so what we're doing is using this additional mass right to teach your body to handle a greater load at higher velocity right 
So again, running, jumping, sprinting, squatting, whatever it may be, this is how we do it. Okay, again, last time. Hands into the chest, neck is neutral, rib cage neutral by a butt, butt squeeze, and we'll get off the side a little bit, okay? Get in a good squat position. I'm going to squat, extend, fall, slam, decelerate, get the ball, repeat, repeat, repeat. Okay, again, we'll go over reps and sets in a second. Next one is going to be, it's what we call, by bunch of names, this we're gonna call a glute banded pull through. Okay, and over here we got it set up. Just anchor, anchor your band to the tension that you can do these movements with the pres prescribed reps and sets. We'll get to it again in a second. Grasp the band under your legs. Make sure as you walk away, I'm not like this. Again, shoulder blades down. Make sure I can contract my glutes. Rib cage is again neutral. I'm not trying to pull this band through with extension and flexion of my spine. I'm doing it with a neutral spine and my glutes contract to get me neutral, okay? All right, I don't want my hands in like this, all right? For me, I just kind of stick my thumbs out as kind of a direction. Right? What I'm doing is elongating my hamstrings, basically a straight leg deadlift, contract my glutes. Straight leg deadlift, contract my glutes. Then kind of on the side a little bit. You can see I'm nice and straight, shoulder blades are down. Reach back, glute contraction. Right? If I need to get a little bit more flexibility, make sure my legs are wide enough that I can get let my hands go between my legs right, without rotating through. Get a nice wide position, glutes, reach back and through, squeeze the glutes, dig the toes in. Toes up, toes down, toes up. You can't see, of course, but that's kind of my mechanism, I think. Toes up, toes down, and I'm grabbing, okay? Next one we're gonna do is we're gonna be using a towel. You know, if you happen to have one of those, the Sornex rollers, or whatever it is, but. A beach towel, a bathroom towel. Here we're doing on, you can see, it's a wooden deck. Right? Uh, there's a lot of friction here, so if you're doing it on a nice smooth floor, you know, concrete floor, it might be a little bit easier. But essentially, we're gonna do a supine leg curl. Okay, supine being, I'm laying on my spine, essentially, my belly up. Now, in previous circuits, we did a similar exercise to this, which is just a, which is a glute bridge, a foot elevated glute bridge. Nothing um, too dissimilar in this in this regard. Again, my foot position is not super wide. It's in the position I would run from. Okay, so I'm on my back. Heels come in. Hands are not out because here I'm rotated. Think of I'm running. I'm going to drive my elbows into the ground. All right, lats down, elbows in, head is back. You can even have your chin up a little bit. It's more comfortable. I'm going to go into a glute bridge. Okay, and I'm going to start sliding. Notice as I extend my feet, I'm not dropping my butt. I'm not doing this, okay? Feet, elbows in, glutes engaged. Now I'm just extending my hamstrings. When I feel my glutes drop, I stop. I don't keep going, okay? That's a key to keep in mind is when I'm doing this, glutes are always tight. So if my glutes are tight, the hamstrings have to do most of the work, okay? So that's this exercise right here. And as always, yes, kick the day in the dick, all right? Last exercise is kind of one of my favorites. It's also it makes for a pretty decent warm up. something very rhythmic, uh, especially for jumping athletes. But for me, I like rhythmic stuff because it makes you focus. And we're talking about activation, warm up. that's something. So. I like to think is what we're just gonna be, I'm doing is we're doing squat hops or squat jumps or squat bounds, whatever you wanna call it, okay? It's gonna say we're gonna have 20 meters, I'm only gonna do a couple of them. It's 20 meters in total, right? So I suggest is a lot of people is like, they can't get in a rhythm anyway. So just start by swinging your hands, squeeze my glutes, get that timing. It's the same as a kettlebell swing, same idea. Okay, you're here, all right, bound, jump. Right? And you're gonna, I'm doing it very easily. So I want you to jump pretty aggressively. Okay, so I'll, 
I'll jump, I'll give you like an actual example of what I'm looking for. Is it gonna look like this? Okay, full extension, full flexion, dynamic, right? Think not how high you can go or how far you can go. Split the difference at 45, okay? That's the projectile we're looking at, okay? As far as reps and sets are concerned, we've got, we've got the six exercises I mentioned, 12 to 15 reps for each, giving you that range based on the weight you choose or the difficulty or your state of readiness. Four to six rotations. After each rotation, you're gonna take approximately 90 seconds to two minutes off. You can push yourself a little bit more and go a little less time, extend if you need to, but again, this right here is about not stressing the system out. It's about implementing a stimulus because so many of us um, are without gym spaces. So keep plugging away at these, these uh, 12 circuits we posted and they'll certainly work out for you. In my knowledge.